the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. All right, I've already opened the animation project from the Lesson 4 folder, and what we've got here is a couple more of those number controls that we saw earlier, as well as a sphere. We're going to work on creating animations to move the sphere around the screen. When you're creating elements on your artboard, the design workspace is usually the best place to work. But as soon as you want to get into animation, you need the objects and timeline inspector to be wider so you can see more of the timeline. I'm going to go up to the window menu and choose the animation workspace. You could also switch to this by pressing F7. Sometimes changing the workspace doesn't always move your artboard to the most opportune location. You can simply double click on the pan tool or use the pan tool to move the artboard to some place where it's more accessible. Now if you've noticed my interactions palette has moved to the bottom and the objects and timelines inspector has gotten significantly wider. I'm going to create a timeline now so we can start working. A timeline is a Windows Presentation Foundation concept that incorporates times with properties. When I click on the plus key here, Blend is going to ask me for a name for this timeline. This one is going to be Simple Move. Now the timeline and a few other things have changed in my application, so let's take a look at what's happened. At the top of my screen, I've got an indicator that timeline recording is on. Similar to when we started editing triggers, this is telling me that any modifications I make are not actually applied to the elements, but are applied to the element at the given time in the given timeline. The actual timeline display is now shown, including the playhead, which is the yellow line indicating at what time the changes we're making are, as well as the play pause controls up above. These buttons allow you to move forward one frame at a time, or jump to the beginning or end of your animation. At the moment, since I don't have any animation, jumping to the last frame won't do anything. There's also a text box here that if I want to move to a specific time, I can just type that time in, press return, and it'll move. In this case, I've jumped out to a minute and 30 seconds, but for starters, I just want to start at the beginning. If I needed to, I could press the X button here to remove the timeline, but right now I'm happy with what I've got. When you're working with multiple timelines, you can press the drop down here to show all of the timelines or select default to leave timeline editing mode. I'm going to switch back into the simple move and let's go ahead and start creating an animation. A keyframe is a marker on the timeline that shows you where a set of properties are established. For instance, if I move my playhead up to two seconds, and move my sphere. A keyframe is going to get added for me. The large white bubble indicates at time 2 for the sphere one or more properties are changing. I can click on the drop down to the left of the sphere to expand to see that I've added a render transform on the sphere. I can expand that and see that I've added a translation and expanding that will show specifically which properties. The timeline responds to the mouse wheel so I can move up or down in the timeline with the wheel to see which properties are being changed. Here you can see that now the X and Y properties have been changed so they will have a new value two seconds after the animation begins. So if I press play, you'll see that the ball moves over that time frame. In some cases, we'll set the playhead to time zero and press this button which records a keyframe. In this case, all of the properties that are animatable will now say at time zero, I want to use the default state. When I press the record keyframe button, what I'm stating is at this time, I want all the properties for my element to match what is displayed on the artboard. Now, as I move the playhead around, you'll see that the ball will move to what I expect the properties to be at that time. I can change these properties just by changing the artboard. So if I move the ellipse again, I'm now stating that at time one, I want the ellipse to be at this point. The small dotted lines have also changed to show me the path that the ellipse is going to follow. So when I press play now, the animation began at time one because that's where the playhead was when I pressed play. 
If the playhead is at the very beginning or very end of the animation, pressing play will start it over at the beginning. The X and Y properties can be changed independently. If I wanted to, I could delete the X animation, leaving only an animation on the Y property. It's useful to remember that a timeline is not just stating where the element will be at a given time, but it's an entire set of properties that you can add or remove independently of each other. Keyframes can also be copied and pasted. Selecting a keyframe, you can press Ctrl C to copy it, then move the playhead to the desired location, and press Ctrl V to paste it. Now, at time 3, the ellipse is going to have the same properties it had at time 0 when I copied the keyframe. For any individual property, I can right-click on that property, and the menu appears to allow me to edit the repeat count. When I choose this, I can type in any value for how many times I want the animation to repeat, or I can press the infinity symbol to tell it to repeat that animation indefinitely. The timing bar next to the Y property extends now without an ending, so when I press F5 to test my application, you'll see that the ball will continue to move up and down repeatedly. The animations that we've created up to this point are all non-interactive animations. That means they're just going to start when the window is loaded and continue on. In the Triggers Inspector, there's a window loaded event trigger, and when you click on it, you'll see that it says that when the window is loaded, the Simple Move Timeline will begin. I'm going to actually delete the Simple Move Timeline, and we're going to create some new timelines. The first timeline I'm going to create is Move to Red. This timeline is going to tell the sphere to move closer to the red number one control after three seconds. So I'm going to advance the playhead to three and move the sphere. I'm going to create another timeline, move to blue, and do the same thing. Finally, one more, moving to green, and repeat the process. Now this time, I forgot to move the playhead to 3, but that can be easily remedied by just clicking and dragging the keyframe to the desired time. Now I've created three different timelines, all of which move the ball to a different location. I'm going to create event triggers on the three controls, 1, 2, and 3, to start their own animation. So I'm going to first select my number one control and add an event trigger to it. Now by default, the event trigger says when window is loaded. I'm going to first drop down this field to choose the number one element, and then the event we're looking for in the second field is mouse enter. I'll just drag through the list to locate it. Now, when number one has the mouse enter it, I'm going to press this play button to add an action, and I want the move to red timeline to begin. Similarly, I'm now going to select number two, add an event trigger to it, and when number two has the mouse enter, I want the move to blue timeline to begin. The same behavior with event 3. You'll notice when I drop down the box this time, it only displayed window and number 2. Whenever this box is dropped down, it will only show the currently selected element and its parent container. Since number 3 is not selected, it doesn't appear in the box, but just clicking on number 3 will now put it in the box so I can have the event occur on it. Now let's take a look at what happens when I run the application. The ball started moving directly to the green. I'll show you why that happened in a moment. 
Now when I move to the blue button, the ball moves over to the blue position. When I move over to red, it does the same. If I happen to move somewhere, say to the green, and then move to the blue before it's completed, you'll see that the ball changes its direction and moves. Let me explain why that happened. This type of animation is called a handoff animation. If we look in the timeline, we see that we've established keyframes at time 3, but no starting keyframes. This means that when this timeline plays, I don't care where the sphere is at the start of the animation, I just care that after 3 seconds, the sphere is at the specified location. So when the sphere was moving from the number 1 control to the number 3 control, the move to blue timeline caused it to stop wherever it was and immediately start moving towards the number 2. You also notice that when the window came up, the move to green animation started immediately. Let's take a look at why that happened. In the trigger inspector, in addition to all of our mouse enter events, there's a window loaded event. By default, when a window is loaded, it will start every timeline in your project. Since these three timelines all affect the same properties, only the final timeline actually has its effects displayed. So move to red begins, move to blue begins, and at the end, move to green begins. Since we don't want these, I can click the minus buttons to delete all three of those actions. So now when I press F5 to run the application, the ball is stationary until I cause one of the animations to start. 